what you came for. 5.5 watt focusable blue laser. Um, so there's the focusing part right there. Cooling fan back here. This is the power supply that's separate. And we'll go into this in a bit more detail shortly. So before we get into the exciting laser part, uh, when I got this laser, I thought um, I wanted to test it, but I wanted to do that in a controllable way. Um, now, the way that you run the laser is that you've got... Man, I've got such a spaghetti junction of wires here. Um, so you've got... Um, you've got the power inlet here. So that's to power the... Uh, that's to run the power supply. And then over here, this pair of wires here, blue and white, are the drive. So if you put five volts on that, the laser will immediately switch on and go to full power. Now, uh, for testing purposes, I didn't want that to happen. So what I've done is, I've made up a, a little um, arrangement with uh, this um, fairly old um, Arduino that I've got here. This is a Due Milanove and a potentiometer and a little script that makes a square wave. Now, I'm going to have to switch my studio light off so that we can see this properly. So... There is my square wave right there. And if I turn the pot, this is going up. So what that's representing now is that line there is 5 volts. So that's fully on. If we go back in the opposite direction, that's off. So... This gives me a way to control the intensity of the laser for focusing and testing purposes. So this is a little kit oscilloscope that I built. I think it cost about $32. And it's worked out really, really handy. I don't have a full-size uh, oscilloscope, so um, this is doing sterling work and if you notice also on the display here this is something i like a lot is this got a duty cycle display right there so that's telling me what the duty cycle or the um on time is of my waveform which is uh, which is really nifty so i'm going to leave this in circuit while i'm testing the the, the laser and I'll just give you a little look at the at the script that I made for this. I didn't make it. I I found it on the interwebs, um, and also the uh, the the um, serial monitor running, and just point out some of the features of the of of that small amount of code. It's tiny, and uh, and what what it does. Okay, so here we are inside the script. This is I've called laser PWM drive, and up at the top here uh, in our setup we've got uh, some pin assignments. Um, apparently, doing it this way you don't need to declare that they're inputs or outputs. Um, so that's our that, those are our pin assignments, and then the next bit is to kick off the serial communications for the serial port, which is running over here on the left-hand side. Um, we look in the loop section of the code, and so we're reading the pot pin using analog read. Uh, the motor value then, which is the output, is a map function. And the map function, what that does is that takes these pair of numbers here which are zero to maximum on the potentiometer and maps those to these two values here so it's more or less converting that 
full scale amount 0 to 1023 which is what the pot can do uh, and it's mapping that to 0 to 255 which is you know like that's a classic naught to um, maximum in uh, in an 8 bit value so then uh, we output that to the motor pin and then the remainder of this is serial print functions over here on the uh, serial monitor so if you look at the serial monitor now and I turn the pin uh, turn the uh, turn the potentiometer at zero and that's maximum so there you go, you can see those two map to values there. And um, that's a really nice, neat little script and does exactly what I want it to do. Now the other thing that I thought was interesting on it was the uh, frequency of the PWM signal. And I thought, hang on, there's nothing in this script uh, mathematically that's setting that frequency, which is um, around 500 hertz. So um, I did a little bit of digging and found out that is the frequency that the PWM uh, pin runs at that's built into the into the uh, Arduino. You can change that. There's a, a big chunk of code to uh, to force it to change, but for the purposes that I've got, uh, that frequency for the PWM signal is just fine. Okay, so. I've got the power for the laser hooked up to my main um, uh, power supply, which is out of shot. Um, and the uh, PWM signal is hooked up to the Arduino. And I've also got that hooked into the, uh, to the scope, so you can see that change. And so we should be good to go. I'm just going to wind this down to zero. Start her up. And we've got lots of fans humming. Fan, uh, the cooling fan for the laser itself. And the cooling fan on the power supply. Now, let's just tweak this up a bit and see if we get some laser light. And we do. So... That uh, that duty cycle is not registering because it's barely triggering. Okay, so that's seven percent duty cycle there. Now, the interesting thing is that the dot that you're seeing on the camera is um, much tighter. There you go, there it is through the green safety goggles. So that dot's much smaller than it looks on the camera right now. The actual output, the light output from it, is not a little dot, it's a little bar. Um, and that makes me think that this is a linear array of... This is a linear array of laser diodes. But what, you, what you're seeing now is actually enough power to burn that MDF. There you go. I've made a little patch there. Um, if I give the camera... I just have to so there you go and we're hitting about an amp on the main power supply now that's almost exactly at 50% duty cycle so that's what the laser is capable of doing at 50% and I'm not sure how well I'm focused here. I won't be able to tell um, without the glasses on. 
but um, this is very effective this is very effective burning so I've got a couple of other components here that I'll show you and these are some some uh, recent purchases so I've got a board here that you might notice if uh, if you've had anything to do with um, solid state lasers this is the LX maker uh, driver board for for a, uh, a desktop laser and um, I've also got and these little guys are the uh, silent stick drivers and there you go there's the uh, there's the chip so these are the silent stick drivers and um, I'll be using using these and doing a conversion on an old 3D printer that I've got. Okay. So I'll just make absolutely sure that there's no way that this can turn on because I'm going to point it right at the uh, right at the camera. So here's the lens I don't know if you can pick that up but in here is the visible end of the laser diode array um, I took the other end off this I took the fan off this but there's nothing to see down there it's just um, a brass plug that uh, goes in here but um, you just might be able to pick up that very small rectangular um, opening there or it actually looks like some sort of glass or something uh, and that's where the the laser uh, that's where the the source of the laser is and so when you're focusing it you can see if you get it badly out of focus um, you can actually see it projecting like a bar shape um, so you know this is not a single you know point dot source of we can create a dot by focusing the laser um, but that um, goes out of focus <laughs> quite quite uh, quickly I would say um, so you're focusing the you know you're focusing the laser down to a point so uh, what that ultimately ultimately means is that you haven't got a collimated beam of laser light that you can that you can use to cut through things I mean I think it will cut through you know three maybe three millimeter uh, material uh, but you know that's going to be a couple of passes and I think definitely from what I've seen with the tabletop laser cutters and, and laser engravers now um, a lot of them are incorporating a, a Z uh, axis into those machines so unfortunately to a certain extent my um, my LX maker board um, might not be the ultimate thing for for running my converted 3d printer uh, as a laser cutter because it's only got an X and Y axis on it it hasn't got a Z axis control on it that I know about um, so uh, you know that's possibly going to be a problem um, but I do have uh, another board here that I can um, that I can substitute so um, anyway um, I'll go ahead and, and use this and certainly I'll be able to engrave with this uh, focused properly but um, 
maybe not cut so effectively. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Onward and upward.